The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Daryl Martin. All right, folks. Welcome here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I am your host, Daryl Martin, and we are looking at the markets. They are pretty flat on the day right now. Not a whole lot of movement going on. We do have some movement over in our metals. We had silver moving quite a bit today. We got copper moving quite a bit, and um, we also have gold having some decent moves along with the ags. And as we do each and every day, I like to do a market wrap for you. Get you caught up, whether you're on TFNN.com, checking us out at Tiger TV, or if you're on TFNN.MOBI, listening to us from anywhere in the world, um, you can go ahead and listen to all the shows right here, live trading, live commentary, nine hours a day. And uh, what we got right here is we got the S&P down 3.5 points. We got the NASDAQ down 6.25. We got the Dow down 31, and the Russell down 4. Over on gold, we got gold down 13 points right now. We got copper down 0, or up 0.037, which is a 1% rise. And we got silver down 0.93, which is a 2.86% drop. We got corn and soybeans both down just over 1%. Corn down 8.75. We got uh, soybeans down 16. Oil up right now, uh, 61 or 53 cents on the day right now from yesterday's close. We got natural gas moved down another 2% today. And um, oil has just been, I mean, not natural gas has just been a crazy volatile instrument lately, moving, you know, 2 to 4% seems like a, on almost on a consistent basis. And uh, we got euro dollar up 26 pips, pound dollar down 4, Aussie dollar down 12, U.S. yen up 39, U.S. franc down 10 at the moment. And we got the U.S. Canadian up 5, and uh, right now, so basically overall, we're seeing the dollar show quite a bit of strength, but a couple pairs, there does seem to be an ongoing battle happening right now. So... Also, what we like to do is check out the fundamentals and see, you know, what news, what things are going on in the markets right now today. And it uh, looks like we got um, Draghi came out. And he had a little speech last night, and um, he spoke at the French Treasury uh, in Paris. And um, basically, it's a you usually get a little volatility during the speeches as people try to interpret what he says because uh, Draghi, of course, being the head of the ECB, is the one that's going to have the biggest impact on the interest rates, et cetera. That was really your big news announcement last night. We rolled on in to GDP this morning on the U.S. Canadian. Didn't see just a massive amount of movement off that announcement. I'll go ahead and pull a chart up for you. We'll look at it right now. And here we go. So got that one going. And look on over here at the U.S. Canadian. And on the U.S. Canadian, you can see right here, GDP came out this morning at 8.30 and uh, 7.30 Central there. And uh, when the announcement came out, it sort of popped up, went down. I mean, it was, you know, there's 20 pips of movement off of it, but it wasn't just a massive movement. It was worse than expected. Not a good thing. Being one of our trading partners didn't exactly help us out a whole lot here in the market. But uh, we did see that that negative report did turn into a down bearish report. And uh, one of the nice things is, you know, if you're trading on Nadex, like spreads or binaries, you could have traded that trade. Hopped in there, went short on US Canadian after the report came out negative. Hopped in. You would have been a little bit late, but yeah, you'd still be up right now. And, um, you know, if you're doing binaries, like an at-the-money binary, you could have had actually a pretty good trade on. So we'll see how it ends up when the day is over. Looking on over, we got the uh, manufacturing PMI. is going to be coming out late tonight, as China likes to do, and release their reports at night when nobody can do anything about it. And uh, so that'll come out at 8 o'clock tonight and will, of course, affect the markets a little bit on Sunday when they open. Looking on over at, let's see, if we had anything late last night, uh, nothing big late last night that really was a big market mover on of itself as far as the scheduled government announcements. And um, nothing tomorrow. We got uh, Sunday. On Sunday, we're going to have retail sales coming out on the Aussie dollar at 7.30 Eastern time. So uh, definitely make sure to check that out and watch that again. Retail sales, 7.30 Eastern time on Aussie dollar. So for you uh, nighttime traders, or maybe it's a daytime for you, depending on where you're at in the world, um, there's your Aussie dollar setup to be able to go in and play on that. They're expecting a report of 0.4%, and uh, that'll actually be lower than last time. Last time they expected 0.4, they got 0.5, and um, time before that they expected 0.5, they got 0.2, and before that they expected 0.3, they got negative 0.8. And they also revised the number, it looks like, um, or the last number they revised down as well. So anyways, what is that uh, retail sales left to change in the total value of sales at the retail level? So it, basically, are they having more or less retail sales? And that's why it impacts it. But again, that's your Aussie dollar trade at 7.30 on Sunday. 
And then going into Monday, making sure you're set up and ready for this upcoming week, we got the Manufacturing PMI coming out on the pound dollar at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, they're expecting that number to come out at 48.1. And uh, PMI numbers, you can always check those out over on MarketEconomics.com. It's Market with an I, though, M-A-R-K-I-T, Economics.com. And uh, so that's a great place to go and check out the latest release. Again, the expectation is that that number is going to come in for the pound at 48.1. will definitely be a pound-dollar mover trade right there. And then rolling on into the U.S. on Monday morning, we're going to have ISM Manufacturing PMI. It can also be found at the exact same location. Um, or you can go in, and uh, if you want to get the direct source on that one, you can go to the ism.ws, ism.ws, and you'll be able to get the ISM Manufacturing Report. And uh, they'll list all that, and they'll have re- been the reports on businesses right there. But... Um, what is the ISM? That's the level of diffusion index based on purchasing managers. Basically, they go in, they survey 400 managers, and they ask them about business conditions, employment, production, new orders, prices, deliveries, inventories, etc. And uh, basically, just try to get a judge on that. And um, right now, they expect that number to come in at 51.5. That's going to be 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday morning. And then there won't be a whole lot going on for a little bit. Then uh, later that night, we're going to have the Aussie dollar coming up again with building approvals. And uh, they expect that number to be down at negative 1.4%. Um, even though it came in at 7.8% last time, and uh, they always thought it would be 1.1%, so they've actually revised it even lower. They keep expecting these building approvals to drop. So far, uh, most of the month, they've actually well exceeded expectations. Um, there was one month in August where uh, it, just, it was negative 20 or negative 17%. So uh, that was pretty bad, but they've been exceeding expectations like uh, the last five months here. So we'll see uh, what they do this time. But right now, negative 1.4%, 7.30 p.m. on building approvals for the Aussie dollar. And then at 10.30 p.m. on Monday night, you're going to have the cash rate. So that's the interest rate for the overnight money market deposits. Obviously, that's a big thing, their Fed funds rate. And I'll show you where you can get that number as well. You can hop on over. You can grab that on rba.gov.au. That's the Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve, you could say, of Australia. rba.gov.au. And it looks like they don't even have the number updated right now, but, of course, they'll have it updated whenever the new report comes out. And let's see, that rate statement will come out at the exact same time and um, comes out at the exact same place. Let's see if maybe I can get a better link on there. There we go. So under media releases, uh, you can go in and you'll see home media releases 2012. And then they'll post that number right up there to help you out on that trade. But 1030, that's going to be a big Aussie dollar mover. They surprised the markets um, the last uh, couple times. They went in, let's see here, like, you know, they left it at three and a half for quite a while. And uh, then they bumped it down to 3.25 in October, and then they bumped it up. Uh, they thought they thought it was going to be 3.5, and you know they they actually brought it lower to 3.25, and uh, then they thought they were going to lower it again in November, but they didn't lower it again. They left it at 3.25, and the forecast is still saying yet again that they think it's going to be at three. So if they move it, uh, if they keep it there, that's you know going to have obviously one impact. If they raise the interest rate, that will make the currency go up. If they lower the interest rate. That'll make the currency go down. If they leave it there, it'll probably go up to stay flat. Okay? So, again, that's 2, 10.30 Eastern Time on Monday. Giving you a lot of Aussie dollar trades coming up. Aussie uh, decided to headlining in the news lately. And so that's our quick market wrap on just the fundamental reports and also on where the markets are trading at at the moment. Let me go ahead and see what else we have going on. Um, looks like uh, Boehner has a little press conference. News report came out on that. And let me see if I can get any information on that. Like there'll be a uh, live stream coming out here. Um, and let's see. But a lot of statements came out by him, but nothing big. And uh, by the way, you can get that. Uh, it's sort of a cool website. I'll show it to you right now. It's uh, speaker.gov. So, and uh, if you go to forward slash live, so anytime he's making any speeches, it'll be on there. Obviously, you can also usually grab those over on C SPAN, and they'll put them up right there. You can see, you know, basically what's happening right there. And you can watch the uh, historical ones to see what they said about the fiscal cliff and everything else, and, uh, you know, basically just get the report. So, sort of, you know, if you got there a little bit late, then hop over to C-SPAN. They'll have the recording up there available for you. And uh, you just want to know about those fundamentals. You want to know about the, you know, obviously where the markets are at currently. You want to know about statistics. You want to know about seasonals. One of the seasonals, I talked about that this morning on the air and talked about it on my show this week, is, you know, usually we have and this week of the, um, of the year, usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are up days. And uh, Friday is usually a down day. And uh, 70% of the last trading day of November, 70% of the days for the last 15 years, have been negative days by an average of uh, 0.4%. And we've been pretty close to that number already today. Uh, Not quite hit it, but pretty close. Right now we're down 0.25%. 
we'll see where the number ends up. But um, like I said, traditionally uh, for the last like seventy percent of the days, um, we was it fifteen out of nineteen or I don't know. But uh, I'd have to go and pull all, all the numbers up for you. But uh, knowing the stats, it is a seventy percent uh, probability of a down day on the last trading day of November, and so far it looks like everything is sort of hanging down. Um, that of course is flipping around and. Um, you know, I'd expect that your dollar actually be dropping in that process, but we haven't seen a major down move, so that hasn't really given the dollar a whole lot of strength in that process. And we expect the U.S. franc to actually rise, you know, in that process. But again, no major move yet, so U.S. franc is sort of flat, and you know, your dollar is about 23 pips. Either way, had a couple of trades on this morning. They, uh, you know, made a little money, which is good. And uh, we even put some on on the show earlier, and uh, that's always a positive thing whenever that can happen. And uh, it looks like they're up as well. And so, you know, if you're in those, you may want to close them out. If you haven't closed them out already, I'll go ahead and uh, close out my demo trades. I had my live trades on and uh, closing those out right now myself. But, uh, yeah, I'll pull them up. I'll show them to you right here on the screen. Let's see here. Let me pull this up and go in. And really, I'm, at this point, I don't expect much more movement to take place. So I'm just going in and, you know, grabbing them and getting out of all the trades I have. On currently, and this one was not supposed to be on there. Get rid of that, and we'll go in here, grab a hundred bucks on that trade. That was the one that we put on on the show this morning with Steve, and I'm um, on the bull bear binary hour, closing all those down. You know, grab a quick hundred dollars, and we got a little bit of profit on our U.S. franc trade over here as well. So we'll grab that one, knock that out, put a little money in the account. Always a good thing on a Friday morning. But uh, anyway, so let's check out what else we have going on. We go into fundamentals. We got that out of the way. We talked about the seasonal cycle of the week and uh, i'll talk i'll look up check out some seasonal stuff and we'll bring that back after the commercial break but uh right now what we'll also do is go in and uh, we'll start checking out some of these statistics and uh, one of the things that you want to do um is hop on and check out nadex if you haven't done it yet so hop on over to tfnn.com and uh also want to highlight to you when you're over there check out the tiger dollar holiday special it's an awesome special right now you get a 25% bonus match. So if you, you know, go in and you buy, you know, $1,000, they're going to give you another 25% on top of that. All right? And they're going to take 10% of your purchase, and in your name, they're going to donate it. TFN is going to donate it directly to the Salvation Army again in your name, so you get the benefit off of that. And um, go ahead and check it out. It's one of the best deals they have ever had that I've seen. And uh, so definitely something to check out. Now, while you're there, after you go ahead and get your Tiger Dollars, hop on and go to nadex.com. And on Nadex, hop on in here. And uh, you can grab a demo account under our products, demo account, fill in this information in about 15 seconds. You can have a demo account. Um, you put in your username, first name, phone number, you know, email address, hit apply. They'll send you a password, log in, and uh, you're ready to go. And then if you want to go from, to a live account, click create account. Go from start to fund it in as little as five minutes with as little as $100 to open an account as a deposit. No fees for the platform, the live data feed, everything else that comes on in. And again, only $100 to fund a live account, and you can get started right away. So stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Happy holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally, we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only, when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase, and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Hopping on over and just checking out everything that's going on in your world. By the way, if you have any questions, Want to ask me about some stocks, forex, futures, options, Nadex, binaries, or spreads? Give me a call right here. You can reach me at 877-927-6648. Again, that's 877-927-6648. All right, well, let's pull up a few things real quick, and we're just going to check out where everything is. And um, by the way, if you haven't done it yet, hop on over here. If you're interested about this whole Nadex thing, or if you want to get access to the diagnostic deviation levels, Hop on over and click on the diagnostic trading thing. You'll see a couple up and down arrows there on the left side of the home page. Click on that, and then you'll see you get a two-week free trial, and uh, absolutely free. Check it out. Check out the spread analyzer. Check out the diagnostic deviation level. See how it works. And you can get in here and uh, also get access to tutorials on how to trade on Nadex. So with that being said, let's check out what those diagnostic deviation levels are saying today and uh, where the market is trading with them. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to my account right here over at TFNN. And uh, give me one second, and I will show you what they are and what they're looking like. And uh, so there we go. Pull it on up. So as soon as you log in, you click on your diagnostic tab there, then you'll be able to get in and uh, check out the deviation levels for the day. And we'll look at the current deviation levels. And we can see right now we got the S&P. Looks like I moved down to 1409.4 was sort of the low move down. We pretty much just touched on that. And uh, let me add one more thing, and I'll bring up a chart for you and put that on the screen. So one second here. We got 
There we go. All right. And uh, anyway, so we got the S&P right here. You can see it moved right down to like a low of about, what, 14, 10 right there. So I got a low of about 14, 10 on the screen. And so pretty close. I mean, we looked at a couple ticks off of that. And um, I can flip through some other charts as well, make it a little bit easier. But uh, we'll go on over here. We'll check this out. Let's see. What do we got? We got the Dow. I'll pull this off the screen. We'll put the chart on the screen. That makes it just easier for you to see the charts as I'm talking about the levels. So let's go ahead. We'll check out the NASDAQ. And on the NASDAQ, it uh, moved on down over here. It looks like we got a low today of 2667.25. And on that low, we expected it to move down to 2667. So you're talking just like, you know, one point off um, right there. So perfect point for a diagnostic deviation level. What does that mean to you as a trader? Well, you're going to be tightening your stops at this point. You could take reversals. Usually I like to take them around, you know, levels of one. But um, you definitely want to be tightening your stops whenever you see those uh, kind of trades right there. And then we'll go over and we're going to check out the Dow. So on the Dow, let's see, it moved on down to a low of 12.973. And we had an expectation of 12.968, so five ticks off of that. So that's sort of like one point on the other markets there. And um, so definitely, you know, you'd be tightening your stops anytime you get close to those levels. And, you know, it's just really a quiet day um, as far as the indices go. Now, some other things that are moving and shaking. We're going to get to those here in just a second. Move on down here. We're going to check this out. On the Russell, we got a low of 817.3. And on the Russell, we expected it to get down to 819 and then to 817.1. So at 819, you would have been tightening your stop. And uh, right about here, so tightening it, tightening it. And then you would have got knocked out right around 818 and a half or so. Didn't quite hit the 817.1, uh, but uh, it got really close. So it definitely hit that half deviation, giving you a perfect signal to get out. And then uh, we'll go on over at natural gas. Natural gas, just like, you know, day after day. Man, if you're not trading this on Natix, you're missing out. Hopping on over here, has a low today at 3.563. And uh, we had an expectation of 3.607, then on down to 3.591, then on down to 3.567. I kid you not, one deviation, 3.567. We got 3.563, and uh, right there. So minus one deviation. So you can see that definitely would have helped you on your take profits. You're tightening up. You're confident. You're not out yet, by the way. So you're still in. You're still going short. We can go over here. We can uh, tighten it up. We'll put it up over at 10 minutes. And um, you'll see right here. So when it hit this 6.3 number over here, you tightened your stop up. And, you know, you still got a little, you know, it still may move for you. So, you know, you tightened it up. Tightened it up again here. After this bar closes out on this 10-minute bar, you'll tighten it up again. If it keeps moving, keep riding it. I mean, this thing's moving so it's 4% in a day on natural gas. So uh, really just moving and shaking, and I uh, just love trading natural gas over there. Um, hop on over to crude oil. So on crude oil, it's up at 88.67. It's like we got a high right now of 88.71. And uh, so if I check that out at 88.07, 88.85 would actually be a one deviation. We are really close, uh, really close to one deviation, or not one deviation, sorry, a half deviation. Really close to a half deviation on the upside from yesterday's close. And so if I was you, I would be tightening my stop right now, okay? Um, just, it's, it's just close enough that it may fall back, and so I'm going to tie my stop right under the low of the 10-minute bar there, putting me at a stop at right 88.58. All right, we'll stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I am your host, Daryl Martin. And uh, now we're checking things out to see, and look at that, the, uh, we got the... Oil contract. I gotta get the words out of my mouth. Oil contract up at eighty eight seventy two right now, and I did mention to tighten that stop on out because we are very close. And uh, again, that eighty eight number right there. So eighty eight. Let's see, eighty five was our half deviation. I don't know if we're gonna get up to eighty eight eighty five. And um, so if I was you, I'd be uh, getting ready just to you know back off a little bit. So not seeing a whole lot of increased volume also on that up move. And um, you'll see oh, we got this little doji going on. We got that. So we did get that 8880 right there. It's like, what is that, 8879. This weird, crazy little, see how it spiked up and just came right back down with no commitment? So that doesn't give me a whole lot of confidence that it's going to keep on going up. And so it, it did the little spike up. There was some major volume, big battle between the bulls and the bears happening. I'll zoom in. You know what, let's go ahead and let's flip over with some candles. So I know that Steve would always, of course, appreciate the candles there. And um, we'll get some candles going on. You can see this doji that just sticks out right in your face, okay? And massive volume on that doji as well. So oil's moving on up, gets really close, and uh, you probably may have got stopped out already. Um, like, right, like when it got that close, I, I would have been looking to get out anyways. But um, let's just say you're still in, okay? Um, I mean, that battle should be a big warning sign. Massive volume, no commitment. I mean, it did fly up, but it did not show that it had really any real strength to keep it on up there. Pulled on back, actually had a decent amount of volume on the pullback here, and then started to move up, but you don't see any impression. Notice how it's moving up, but the volume is really low, okay? 
So you got a little bit of a volume uptick, but nothing compared to these bars over here. And so just me, myself, I'm not real comfortable with it moving up a whole lot higher. Yeah, of course it could. But that's why, like I said, if you're still in, tighten your stop. Put it right below the low there, 88.58. And uh, you never be, you know, don't have to be upset because you take a profit, right? And um, so, I mean, easy trade setup. You got an entry here. You have an entry here. You have an entry here. So, um, and then if you did do the pullback, you did another entry right here. And uh, that'd be a little crazy, but you could do it if you did another entry right here. Then I'd definitely at this point be tightening my stop. But you had plenty of entries to hop in on oil all morning long. And um, so let's go ahead and check out a few of the other markets. We'll go on. Let's check out some. Let's see here. We can do. Let's hop into our ags. All right. So we got corn right now. We're going to check that out right now. And pull it on up. So on our corn contract, we had a low of 748. And on that, let me check it out, 748, 748.1. Um, and let's see, on that contract, 748.1, we expected it to get down to 748.1. It got down to 748. So guess what that means? We are going to go ahead and tighten our stop. And what happens? We get stopped out. Okay, when I say tighten my stop, as soon as it hits that level, I'm going to put my stop at the high of the most recent bar. And I may, if I'm, if I'm pretty happy with my profit, you know, I may tighten it like on every bar or I may wait till the next deviation level and then tighten it again. So um, on a Friday, if I get a half deviation, I'm happy. I don't expect it to move a lot more than a half deviation. If it does, awesome. But, you know, I'll be happy for a half deviation on a Friday. And, um, and uh, let's see here. S&P still point down. Like I said, we do expect the market to drop and uh, stay down for the rest of the day. Not necessarily a huge drop, but a drop nevertheless. And um, let's go ahead and check out our soybean contracts. We got soybeans right now heading on down there, looking at their low at 14.29 on the day. And we expected soybeans to get down to, let me see here, this doesn't even seem right. Let me pull it on up. Soybeans and uh, down to 14.40. Well, wow, that was at 14.48. So 14.29. We expected it to go down to 14.39 and 0.9, then 14.36, then 14.31.8, and uh, that would have been a full deviation on soybeans. So uh, just to sort of you know walk through it with you, 14.39.9, we're going to hit that low right here. We're going to tighten our stop. Okay, it goes down to 14.36.6 in the same bar. We're still moving down. We're going to tighten our stop again. It's still below that. We're going to keep our stop tightened. Okay, so leave it right there. It moves on down. Now we're waiting for it to hit 1431.8. Well, it moves down. Doesn't hit it in this bar. Doesn't hit it in this bar. It does hit it. Looks like right there. 1431.75. So we tighten our stop again. Now we're at one deviation. Okay, at one deviation, when it's broken below that, I'm tightening on every bar. I'm going to tighten again. I'm going to tighten again. I'm going to tighten again. And finally, I'm going to get stopped out. I got stopped out right there at 1432.25. Okay? So, and you can see this. After it hit that one deviation, what happened? Flat. All right, and again, what is a deviation? Well, a diagnostic deviation uses implied volatility, which is expected movement of the market out of the options. And so this is how far the market said the market was going to move. And you don't want to argue with the market, okay? And uh, you don't have to bend your head sideways to see it. The number is right in front of your face. <laughs> so there's really no denying it. We go right there, 1431.8. That's your one deviation. Here's your stops on the way down. And uh, 1431.8. You could even, I mean, one of the trades that I like to do sometimes, I do trend reversals. So I'll wait till it goes down and it hits that 1431.8, and then I'll buy. So that is an, an option. I always say I'd like to do that on Nadex. I don't do it anywhere else because it may keep going. But, um, you know, I'm not going to buy just because it hits it. I'm going to look for, you know, some sort of up move requirement, you know, some sort of volume going in the other direction. But right now we just see a whole lot of nothing happening over on soybeans. So I'm definitely, you know, I'm just out. I'm flat and, um, you know, checking to see what else exists in the market. So let's go ahead and let's look at some of our currency pairs. We have the Aussie dollar moving around, moving and checking. And it uh, looks like it moved uh, first, uh, you know, early this morning, moved on up to a high of 1.0446. And um, didn't even quite hit a half deviation, nothing impressive. Okay, turned around, went on back down. Really choppy. I mean, you basically had a nice little downtrend going on. And then it started pulling up with a little bit of an uptrend. And, um, you know, if I'm trading Aussie dollar, one of the things I like to do as well is I'll go in and um, even if you're going to trade the spot market, Okay. You know, be checking out the futures. Why? So you can get accurate volume data. And um, so you can see this big move up. Well, that gives you, you know, a little confidence. The market is pretty uh, serious about being up. So when you get this pull back again, you have another trade right there you can do. And um, so that's actually a decent trade on the Aussie dollar. And, uh, of course, I'm 
knocking out the overnight data. Let me go ahead and pull that up so that way I don't look a little confusing when you pull it up uh, back to back. You don't show the overnight data with the futures. You had it on the Forex. All right, there we go. So checking this out, you got this choppy move, choppy move, but notice we get this big move up. And I mean, that's that's a decent amount of volume, but it's not impressive. Okay. I mean, look, this bar right here that did nothing had the same amount of volume. So there's not a lot of commitment on that up bar. All right. Would you, I mean, you can sort of see that. I hope you can see that, that there's all these volume bars here. And I mean, this is just not a big commitment, even though it's a big move, it's not a big commitment. And so that could actually be a sign for you to go ahead and go, you know what, I'm ready to short this thing. It couldn't break the half deviation. I'm ready to go short. And, I mean, then it plunged on down and, you know, bam. So uh, how low did it go? Well, it went all the way down to 1.039 over on, if you're looking at the futures market. We expected it to move down to 1. Let's see, 0.327 would have been a two deviation move. Let me check it out over on the spot just so we get it on par the exact same. And we had, because that's what I pulled the deviations on, so 1.0401 was the low on the spot market. And if I look over to Aussie dollar, 1.0401, so it would have pulled down, you know, basically half deviation there. So, I mean, nothing impressive, but enough to tell you, hey, take your profit, get out, be happy. Um, let's hop on over to Euro dollar. Same thing, you can always use your volume to help out with that, but it moved on up to a high 1.03, 1.3026. Uh, and um, 1.3022 was actually a 0.7 deviation. So when that happened, you know what? Tighten your stop. What did we see at that same time early this morning? If we go over and we look at the futures contracts over on this. Well, look at that. We do get a volume bar. So that's going to make me a little nervous. Uh, that may be some true commitment that keeps going up. And um, Or, now here's the other thing. Volume has sort of a, it can get you in two different ways. One, it can be a confirmation of a trend. Okay. And the way that you'll know that is not by the initial bar, okay? Um, the way you're really going to know it is when it pulls back on lighter volume and then breaks through with higher volume. That's your confirmation of your trend, okay? So you get this volume spike, and that looks really good, but uh, we pulled back. I mean, we have this really tiny volume here. I mean, look at this. We had barely anything going on. With this volume spike, you're like, wow. But it wasn't like it was really pushing up on volume on the way up. It just blew up right there, obviously due to news. And, I mean, that's what that bar is. Now, the other thing is, you know, whenever you get that volume spike, that also is just orders getting filled, stops getting hit, okay? And, you know, big players, you know, basically dumping positions off. And, you know, why would there be stops getting hit? Well, where are we at? We're at 1.30. People are putting stops on like crazy in this level, right? This is a major, you know, resistance level right here. I mean, just look back over the last several days. So we're playing right there in this resistance point. And so, I mean, it's just above. I mean, you got to love this. Those guys always hunt those stops, right? I mean, just above the high of yesterday. Okay, so where do you think most of that volume took place? As all these short traders were stop losses. That was all these breakout traders buying. Okay? So, and it even moved right back up to that exact same level. And uh, so, just, you know, very good trade for you. But the biggest thing, even if you're long in that trade, great job. But tighten your stops. And something like deviation levels lets you know when to have some confidence to do that. Um, and then, of course, volume helps you confirm. Hey, you know what? A lot of orders just got filled thing might fall back, you know, should I tighten my stop? It did hit a deviation. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten it. Um, let's hop on over, check out the pound. So over on the pound dollar, what we got going on? Well, we got to move on down a little bit lower to a low of 1.5988. So pound dollar, 1.5988. And uh, let me make sure I got that right. 1.5988. There we go. And on the pound dollar, 1.5974 was our half deviation move. So when we hit, we didn't quite hit it, but we get close. And like I said, when you get close to a half deviation, to one deviation, you know, look to start tightening it if you see anything um, going against you. So this thing goes down here. I mean, you're talking like, you know, five, ten ticks away. And uh, now let's, let's tighten this up a little bit more. We'll see even better on the 10-minute bars. And uh, let's see what's going over here. I got it on 30-minute bars right now. There we go. Okay, so we're moving down, and we're getting really close, right? Because our, our goal, our first goal in pound dollar it's going to be 1.5974. We get down to 1.5988. We're 12 ticks away from being able to tighten our stop. And it doesn't happen. All of a sudden, it starts pulling back. So we're getting a little nervous. goes down. This little upshoot happens again. starts dropping back down. That's your clue. Okay? <laughs> tighten your stop. Uh, let's go ahead and look over here, and we can check out, you know, the volume on it. So what did the volume tell us this morning um, as this was going on? Okay? So, well, we got this massive down move. Great trade. Okay? If you got short on it. And then look at that volume spike. 
Remember what I say about volume spikes? Well, they can be confirmations if they happen on the breakout. Okay? But look, this is the breakout right here. Okay, let's see this low. Let's zoom in a little bit more for you. So this low right here. And look at this little volume high. Let's find out, you know, let's just put on a price right there. When did it break out of that? Well, right here. The volume is lower from there to there. Okay? So with that volume being lower, you know what? I'm not impressed by that move down. Okay? Because it's not showing conviction on the move down. <clears throat> what happens, it gets down here, and all the big boys open up the market, the, you know, the uh, floors open up, they go and they, they close out the positions. They go, boom, and fill all the stop loss orders, and they're getting out. All right? And uh, then you see this massive volume spike. That means tighten your stop. That volume spike always means tighten your stop. Okay? Um, that's one of the things that it should consistently mean to you. Now, it starts pulling back up on lighter volume, so that's a good sign. Well, we move back down, but we're not breaking the low. We're not getting heavier volume. We're not adding into our short position, okay? And uh, we're glad because over here, what happens? Boom, it flies on back up, and, uh, you know, and it does so on very heavy volume on the way up. So now you got all the short traders that got in late with all their stops right up here. They all got stopped out right there, okay? That's basically what happened, unfortunately, for a lot of people. And then uh, they're like, okay, sweet. We took it down. We took out all of our profits. We went in. We bought up. We bought up. We bought up. And then we dropped it down a little bit to get some people excited, get them in there. And, uh, okay, now we know other stops are up here because if I was, you know, trading that way, that's where I'd want to put my stop if I was short and uh, if I wasn't reading volume with it. And um, so they're like, okay, well, we know they'll have a whole bunch of buy orders up here to cover themselves. Bam! Knocked them out. And uh, we're done. We're going to go home and uh, get some lunch and, you know, not come back for the rest of the day. Market goes flat. All right? So that's just sort of, you know, how the market works. And you got to understand how to read volume. And you need to know proper expectation on movement. So that's part of your technical analysis. That's part of your seasonal analysis, fundamental analysis, all that stuff coming together for you. Looking on over and checking out the U.S. yen. So on the U.S. yen, man, it just uh, decided to, you know, has a nice pretty chart right there. Just flying up, pulling back a little bit, flying up some more. And uh, we got a high right there of 82.73 on the U.S. yen. 80, and we had an expectation for a move up to 82.60 as a one deviation mark. So if we go right over here to 82.60, we hit that mark right here, and that's where we want to be tightening our stop on our long trade. So we tighten it there, and we tighten it and tighten it and tighten it and keep tightening because we're at one deviation, right? So we don't expect more. If we get more, we're just going to take every bit we can get. And finally, we get stopped out right here, right below the low of this bar. It's going to be 82.64. And uh, you had two, you know, great long setups. And we can also go over and check out, well, what did we see on the volume? So now this is going to be a little bit inverted for you, but, uh, you know, just the way it works. But uh, we go over here, and like I said, you got a great setup to go long. And look at this. I mean, talk about just a pretty trend, all right? Pops up, pulls down on lighter volume, nothing going on, starts picking up on heavier volume. You're, you're excited, okay? And it moves on up. Now, again, the, the price is off because of, you know, how they quote, because it's yen dollar versus dollar yen. Or, yeah. <laughs> um, so the U.S. yen is yen USD. Uh, so, but anyway, so it's moving on up, and then you know you're getting this, you know, this great volume. So you're, I'm honestly pretty confident about an up move, but I hit a one deviation, so I'm tightening my stop. I tighten it right there. Glad I do. They pull it back and go flat for the rest of the day. They took all their profits at the one deviation. That's how far they expected it to move. All right. Well, there, there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we're just going through and sort of just checking out step by step and just looking at several other things on the market right now. But uh, just what we got going on, we have a couple more pairs that we haven't knocked out yet. So let's go ahead and knock out those pairs. We've got two left over here on the USD franc. And uh, looking at the uh, dollar franc here, we got the Swissy and that moved on down to 0 0.9244. And uh, that's a, you know, a decent little move, but uh, we got, uh, again, 0 0.9244. And we expect it to move down to 0 0.9248. Again, move down to 0 0.9248 would have been a 0 0.7. First, we would have expected to move down to 0 0.9258, but we hit that. So basically the same bar, okay, right there. Watch, we hit it right here. And so you might have got stopped out a little bit early on that trade if you're tightening up your stops. And uh, not a bad thing. Still had a good trade, still short, you know, took some money off. And then it moved on down again. And uh, if so, if you weren't stopped out, if you're waiting on the next deviation level, however you're doing that, um, I probably would have been out. But if you were in, then you could wrote it down to at least a 0.7 before you tighten up your stops again. And, of course, then you would have been stopped out. Now, the move on back up to the upside, I'm not sure if it got half a deviation. Let's check, 0.9291. And we had a U.S. franc expectation, 0.9304. So it, didn't even, it only got 10 ticks above yesterday's uh, settlement price there. And let's go ahead and hop on over to the, but it did do a, a gap fill, I guess you could say, as it did the bounce. USD Canadian. So USD Canadian, so had a nice big spike. Um, basically, this is a GDP number going on over here. And as uh, that number spiked on up, 0.9951 on the high side. And we had an expectation of a spike up to 0.9948. 
That is a one deviation move. So it literally spiked to the one deviation and let it all go. And uh, so that's definitely, you know, if you got up here and you got out, wow, that's, you know, you're amazing. Um, but otherwise, you should have tied up your stop at least. And right here, you would have been stopped out right around the low of this bar um, when it gave all that back. And uh, that's a low of 0.9938. So 0.9937 basically would have stopped out as soon as this bar closed. Open, boom, out. And uh, But you got a nice trade on. So... Or you could have done a straddle. You could have hopped in knowing that the uh, announcement was coming out. Maybe like 30 minutes to an hour before, hop on, put a straddle on there, look at the you know plus and minus deviation, and take profit if it hits either level. That's one of the things I like to do when trading at Nadex. So uh, that's basically our market wrap. Went through each one of the markets that I trade on Nadex, and I like to look at each one of those markets each and every day. And a uh, reminder, hop on over, check out the Diagnostic Spread Scanner. You can go in here, and in seconds, you can find the best spread for your trades. And also, you get access to the deviation levels every day. And uh, you click on Spread Scanner. You'll be able to say, you know what, I want to go in and I want to trade, you know, the US 500. And I don't want to risk more than 100 bucks. And I don't want to have, I want to basically be able to have a potential to make two bucks for one dollar at risk. And I want to, you know, say sell. Because I think the market's going down today. And then it'll pop up and it'll just show you your trades that you have available to you. And um, how far they have to be to break even, what the risk is, and, you know, what the reward potential is. So, you know, this trade barely has to move at all, 1.5. And it has a $31 risk, and it can make $265 up to. Now, I don't expect it to make that much. But uh, if I'm selling at $1412, I expect the market, you know, potentially to hit down to a $1409, $1410 today. So, you know what? I can make a couple bucks on that. That's not too bad. And uh, so you can go in. You can look at, you know, this trade right here is a potential trade. to have a very tight stop loss. If you had five of them, to make it like we're one point equal to 50 bucks, then that would be a $150 risk. Let's make a three-point stop loss on the S&P. And uh, so a pretty simple trade right there. You go down to this one, but it has to move down a lot further. So I probably wouldn't choose it. It has to move 3.8 points. And uh, so I'd narrow it down to those three. And then once I did that, I'm like, you know what? This has two minutes to expiration. Probably not my trade. And uh, so I'd get rid of that one. All right, this one has an hour left. That's okay. But I get uh, basically about the same amount of risk. And I get, you know, another hour and a lot more profit potential. So I'm going to choose this one. And so literally in a couple seconds there, you figure out which one you want. You just hop up, you hit the sell button, boom, opens the order for you. And it makes a better way to trade Nadex easier to trade. All right, I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day, and a great weekend. And I will see you Monday. Stay tuned. we got another show coming up right after this for you. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.